thanks for staying with us. You know, Tuesdays we like to do healthy um, topics. So we'll be discussing aging in good health, dementia prevention and management. Joining us on the show now is the founder, lead consultant, geriatrician, internist, JBS Gerontology Center, Dr. Mm -hmm. Ulutoyi Ajala. Welcome to the show. Hello, thank Welcome you. To have you again. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so you can call and join the conversation on 081-270-53687-091-390-7694. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. Aging gracefully, you know, people are always scared about getting old because they want to look continually beautiful and graceful. Just like YK at 62, she's looking very gorgeous. And we keep looking at her and thinking, ah, how are we going to make sure that we look even like her or better than her when we get to that age? But really and truly, people are always afraid of that season in their life. Um, I like also stuff on the break basis before we get into dementia at all. Mm. How can we prevent or reduce age? I want to say prevent, right in the wrong way. <laughs> how can we reduce the features of aging on our body? Right, okay. So, um, <clears throat> sorry. I think you've clarified it properly. Reduce or prevent aging is wrong because there are two ways to live. You either age or you die young. So if you want to, to um, have a long life, you have to age. Um, so looking at our beautiful sis here, we could ask her a few questions, maybe because she's brightly colored and has a positive mindset. That actually helps. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm right, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, um, but apart from that, there are a few things um, that we all have to pay attention to. Some of these things are basic, the things that we always talk about, things like nutrition, what you eat, what you drink. I'm one of those people that firmly believes that you really should not cut anything out completely. Mm -hmm. Everything has to be done in moderation. Yes. Apart from things like smoking. So smoking, out. Sugar, I've said this before, out. The reason why I always say sugar out is because sugar is the number one aging food. Or, yes, yes. In the, in the, you know, anything that, when we're talking about things that we consume into our bodies, sugar is the one thing that everyone should cut out. Mm -hmm. And the reason why you have to cut it out is because it is, um, it causes, it, it promotes inflammation in the body. It in, encourages the release of something called cortisol that encourages um, stress. Oh, stress. Well, it's, it's, cortisol is a stress hormone. So anything that, you know, helps, makes the body produce more stress hormones should be cut out. Sugar is the number one. Now, hmm. that sugar, let's define it a bit because uh -huh. so is this carbohydrate that's converted to sugar or is it the, the fried, like fried sugar or oh, is it the no, sugar in the fruits? There's sugar everywhere. There's sugar everywhere. There's natural sugar. There's artificial added sugar. Try and cut out any additional sugar. Right. We grew up Rice is a, it's a carbohydrate, it's starch, it's not sugar. Okay. I'm actually talking about sugar. You know, I'm talking about that refined product, that mm -hmm. substance that we put in our um, food and drinks to sweeten it. We don't need it. I hate sugar. Good. I love sugar. That's why you look the way you do. I hate sugar. So you don't, you don't add sugar to, you add honey to your tea. So there you go. So if you want to look like sis, at but 62. I take too. Okay, so oh, okay. I take coffee. I'm somewhat addicted to coffee. Yes. Yeah, black coffee is horrible. It's an acquired taste. Black Thank coffee? you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so sugar is an acquired taste. I mean, one of the yes. To sorry. enjoy all my other tastes, but yeah. I love my sour. I've come to love them, and I feel much healthier. Growing up, you know, they used to just give us a choco. We call it tea for every bread that we eat. And yes. I noticed that all through school, I was always tired. Yeah. I would sleep through classes. I can't concentrate. And recently that I stopped it, I felt much healthier. So just yes. take out... Um, Even Gary, I don't use... No, no, I, I take my very my sour. plain sour Gary. Gary. Can I could, uh, yes. Yeah. So, since we're using YK as a case study, yes. the next thing that I would say has worked for um, YK is her active lifestyle. Oh, yes. So in what way would you um, advise someone who hasn't had the active lifestyle that uh, YK has had and they find themselves in their 60s can they start now and will it make an impact? Yes, you can. So actually, you know, aging actually starts at 30. Mm. So from age 30, mm -hmm. you need to start. You have to be intentional about this. You have to be intentional. If you want to age in good health, age in a good way, age gracefully like sis, 
you have to start really in your 30s and be intentional. I wouldn't say have to because by the time you get to 60, 65, even, if, even at that age, sorry, um, <clears throat> you know, if you start to incorporate things into your life and into your, um, you know, your everyday mm. living, then you can still age better, even if you start later. Okay, in let's, life. Let, so we're trying to get the audience um, to get information from you. Yes. So somebody right now has a mother. She's yeah. abroad, she's trying to help her mother. A mother who is probably not used to having an active lifestyle, yes. has a driver, has a help, as if you know she's like a madam. Yes. And so how that can somebody who is a madam, who has help and everything, how can they begin to take exercise seriously? So, because I know my mother used to feel like, I can't start be jumping, or jumping up and down at mm. this age. I'm too old for that. How do we get our mothers, who are madams, to start living healthier? Well, they can come and see me for a start. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the first thing, you know, I've got a center now in Lekki. It's the Gerontology Center, GBS Gerontology Center. Gerontology, not geriatrics. Okay. Gerontology is the study of aging. So, you know, you can come from middle age and come over there and have a consultation and we can help you to age better. Oh. That's not the, yes, that's, the, I mean, that's, that's one of the things we do yeah. at the center. Yeah. So you can send them my way. But, you know, on a serious note, really, I mean, that's one of the problems that we have in this society is that lots of madams, I was actually told once by a friend, Toy, madams don't do what you're doing <laughs> as in you know you get up you you know you have guests you serve them yourself you you, you mm. you're running around doing things but so, madams don't do that so madams don't do anything here and you know for those of us who you know when you travel and you come back you land in lagos half of the plane is sitting in their seats waiting for wheelchairs to come and pick them up mm. to take them to the mm -hmm. uh, that actually frustrates me actually it upsets me because i'm thinking oh my god mommy why are you sitting down get up you know you have to walk but if you no, i just want to sit here and get someone to wheel me down it's a mindset mm. and it's a very very bad poor mindset actually it's something that we have to guard against actively so we still have our doctor in the building um Dr. Jalab, we're talking about aging gracefully, but I know we also wanted to touch on dementia, which is also really important mm -hmm. because this is one of the illnesses, they say, of the old. Um, could you tell us a bit about dementia and why should we also pay attention to it at this time? Okay, so the first thing I want to say about dementia is that um, I came to Nigeria in 2018 to set up my elderly health care service and I believed at that time that dementia was a Western problem. <laughs> I did not think we had dementia in Nigeria until I came to provide that service to the elderly. I was shocked. Um, very common, a lot more common than people are aware of because, you know, our society, people don't like to talk about these things. So things that are happening in families, not many people want to talk about them. So it's very common, very important. Now, it's a disease of older age, not a disease of aging. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, Explain. you know, it's more prevalent in older age, but it's not a normal part of aging. Okay. Dementia is an abnormal, it's, it's an abnormal um, situation. It's an abnormal um, problem, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But it's common, it's commoner in the older age group. I have a few patients who are in their 60s who've got dementia, but most of my patients with dementia are older, mm -hmm. much so it, older. So, of course, the question yeah. will be, is it a lifestyle problem that causes dementia? Is it something in our um, genetics? It's 50-50. Uh, it's okay. Actually, I say 30% 30, 30 of um, dementias are preventable, okay. well, according to most of the studies that have been done. For those who don't know what dementia is, could you please tell us what it is? Because some are just hearing dementia, but they're not even sure what it means. Could okay. you tell us? So dementia is um, a problem that affects the brain where people find it difficult to remember things, their behavior changes, and it gets to a point where it can get so bad that they can't even look after themselves <sighs> properly. You know, they can wander out of the house and get lost. You know, the misplaced things, they just can't function. So you know that... Um, so many people in their 50s will say to me, oh, Tony, I think I'm, I've got dementia because I put my keys somewhere yesterday. I couldn't, I, I didn't know where it was. That's normal, you know, but you're able to function normally right. otherwise. When people have dementia, the dysfunction in the brain is so severe that they can't remember things. They can't remember 
the, the normal day to day, yeah, yeah the normal day to day um, um, yes. activities that, you know, so even being able to feed themselves, sometimes they can't do, the brain just forgets. It forgets um, how to, um, how to actually perform things. It, sometimes, sometimes even walking, you know, they get to a point where they might not be able to walk. Some people can walk, but won't be able to remember who their children are. They can't remember where they are, you know. So it's, it's, um, it affects what we call cognition. Cognition is being able to remember and execute functions. Mm. Okay, a lot of people believe in this part of the world that we don't have it, it's not prevalent here because we, the lifestyle that we have here is we, it's communal and your old mother will stay in your house with you till maybe she passes or, I mean, you're all, so because you're in a, a familiar environment, you probably won't, even if it develops, it will be, it will be a slower yeah. process. Yeah. Is that true? Um, well, there might be a bit of truth to that in that if you are someone who is very active, activity slows down the progression of dementia. So social activities, social interactions actually slows down the progression of dementia. Um, just give you an example, during COVID, so lots of my patients, I encourage them to go out. So, and that's one of the ways you can age gracefully. Be active, go out, socialize. Don't live in isolation. Don't live in depression. You know, don't just... Mm. Going out, having a social life, it helps. So if you are in a, an environment where there's a lot of social activity, mm. even if dementia sets in, the progression of that dementia will be, with, um, dementia will be slower than if you're living in isolation. Mm. 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 However, dementia is very prevalent in this society. Mm. Mm. It's interesting because you see a lot of people get involved in like church activities and you're thinking they're so involved. These are some of the activities that keeps them Amen. and their husbands are home just being daddy. And the daddy unfortunately passes faster because they're just <laughs> at home. But the mommies are doing church meetings, for programs, mm. they're traveling for camp and everything. Activity, their brain is working. So it's an interest. Just this is my own example, but it's yes. interesting. I'll come to you, Nima. Let me take this call. Nijama's been holding from the UK. Good morning, Nijama. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm calling to ask you just a question. Yes. Um, I'm a fan of your view, and I remember how, uh, I remember she was here the last the last time she was on the program. Yes. She talked about her um, services for elderly people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have passion for elderly people as well. And um, I'm in the UK, and I'm currently doing a study around 18, 12, and the rest of it, you know, issues around 20, right. affecting elderly people. And so this is like a passionate topic to me. <laughs> but then I want to ask you this, yeah? Um, before she came down to Nigeria, because I'm aware she was once in the UK studying and all, but before she came down to Nigeria, how, how did she come up with the statistics around aging population in Nigeria, number one? Um, and does she have a, a, a study done in Nigeria? Because, like a thesis you know, like Mariah question. usually says, that we don't have data in Nigeria, and that's a big problem. Right. Um, yeah. So I guess she's just worried about data. Like it's difficult. Yes, yeah. more people are coming into this industry, but many of them don't yeah. have data. She's mm -hmm. asking, like, maybe how did you were you able to get some of your data? There's actually data. So I mean, there are nine geriatricians in Nigeria. Um, there's um, another geriatrician in Abuja who is very actively involved with um, government um, organizations, and she she actually gets a lot of data for us. The, you know, the the, the centers for um, statistics and you know the census. Um, studies and everything so there is more data than people think, think. Mm. so at this at this time we've got two um, government funded geriatric centers in Nigeria there's one in Ibadan I'm a visiting consultant for that center in Ibadan and there's one in Benin and we do a lot of research there's a lot of research being done and a lot of papers being written. So, yeah. you know, in a way, it's, it's easy to sit outside Nigeria and say, like I did, yeah. oh, there's no, there's data. no data, there's nothing. But there is actually, yeah. you know, Nigerians are some of the most innovative, mm. intelligent people in the world. 
do a lot of research, more PhDs probably than anywhere else mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. yes, you so know, you everyone's know. writing papers, everyone's doing studies. So there's, more, there's a lot more data out there than people think. She just needs to search. Right. Mm -hmm. She needs to search and ask the right people. Right. So there's a national, um, um, there's, a, there's a center for um, senior citizens in Abuja doing a lot of work. Wow. So if she let contacts me, them, she'll get a let lot me come of to you, Nima, but Let me just quickly take this. Book is holding from Kaduna and I'll come to you. Buki from Kaduna, you're live. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Please, I have a question for the guest speaker. I'm having trouble Good hearing morning. you. Good morning. Nice to hear from you. Good Please, morning. I have a question for the guest Please, speaker. go ahead. I don't know if the uh, the master is common in children because. Hello, can you hear me? I'm we having can trouble hear hearing, but go ahead, please. I can't hear. hear. It's listening to herself. Nima, go ahead, please. Okay, so I met a family whose mom passed well into her seventies, and they said, you know, she had dementia genetically, and she, you know, she started to exhibit it, but it took longer for it to fully manifest because she was researching and writing. I wanted you to talk about whether such activity. She wrote many books that, you know, become um, the foundation that I read growing up. Mm. Does researching and writing or, you know, being reading, mm. does it help to delay the... It helps a lot. And one of the reasons why it helps is that it's one of those brain-stimulating activities. If you can, you know, there's, there's a saying, what you don't use, you lose. Mm -hmm. If you use your brain... If you exercise your brain, it's, you, you, you wouldn't lose your brain as quickly as if you didn't. Mm. And one of the ways you can exercise your brain is by reading, by writing, by, doing, by playing games. So, you know, crossword puzzles, Sudoku. I always tell my patients, you have to read the newspaper. First of all, it orients you, you know. So you read the newspaper, you see what day it is, you see, you know, what year it is. And then... It just keeps your mind active. Learning new skills, you know, learning how to play the piano or learning how to sing a song or learning or doing, you know, dance classes. So those are sort of things that um, at the center, at, at my center, we, we're going to have a memory day unit. I don't want to call it a dementia day unit. I want to call it a memory. It's memory day unit. And at that day unit, we're going to do what we call cognitive stimulating activities. You know, those things that exercise the brain so, so you can exercise your muscles you know you can do your exercises train that also helps the brain why because as you exercise your body as your heart rate goes up as blood gets pumped around more blood flows to the brain more oxygen goes to the brain your oxygen get your the brain gets more oxygen more food right. you know same so that helps brain stimulating activities mm. like reading writing all those game. things researching all those things help. Slows down dementia right. significantly. We're still talking about aging gracefully. Yes, Mariam had a question. Yes. So we know now the issues, the problems, oh, and you know what you do wrong and you may end up having dementia. But what are the lifestyle um, things that people can start doing right now um, to e either prevent it or delay it, as you um, earlier explained? Mm. And... Um, what activities and how soon should someone start this? Okay, so I'm just going to run through a list now. So the first thing that people need to start doing now is exercise. <laughs> <laughs> the most important, that is actually the most important thing, exercise. Every day if you can, three times a week if you can't. 30 minutes, moderate intensity. You can walk, like Sis was saying, you can walk. Brisk walking very effective. I exercise every day. I do that not because I want to be skinny or slim or whatever, mm -hmm. but because I want to age well, because I want to age in good health, because I want to prevent dementia. It does all of those things. Mm. Number yes. two? Number two, um, socialize. Mm. Be a social person. Don't That's live in isolation. COVID was a bad time for many older people because they stopped going out, they stopped going to church, the children stopped coming around, grandchildren stopped. People aged in a year mm. and died, not of COVID, mm. of aging. Mm -hmm. mm. People who had been otherwise okay were at home, isolated, lonely, depressed, and 
became frail and died because of social isolation. So socialize, be a social person, keep in touch with people, go out. Third thing, pay attention to your body. Take the tests, go to see your doctor. Every six months from the age of 50, have some kind of medical engagement. I'm not saying go and check into a hospital. Mm. I'm saying go and check out, Regular do check. your full blood count. You know, get, go to your doctor, come to me. I'm a gerontologist, right? I'm a geriatrician. Yeah. You know, come, we'll do a, get, just get your, those things done. Don't mm. leave things, you know, pay attention. Be intentional about paying attention to your body mm. after a certain age. How is dementia diagnosed? Dementia is diagnosed by the way people behave. So most people, it's behavior, honestly. People change. So many, quite often, it's a case of the people around them just notice a change and say, you know what? My mom has changed or my dad has changed or auntie has changed. She stopped, remember, she doesn't know mm -hmm. where she is. She got lost yesterday. She is misplacing things. You know, some people, you know, there's some people who they're so good with money. All of a sudden, yeah. they don't know what's going on. But my question, on. doctor, is that how do we prevent it? I don't want to... Wait for that to happen. If yes. in your 40s, 30s, 50s, what can you do to prevent you do this whole socializing, exercising? Yes. But is there anything we need about eat? eating? Not yes. to get to that point. Well, All right. So in, when it comes to eating and drinking, like I've said before, everything in moderation. That is my motto. Everything in moderation. Because if you want to um, cut everything out, you, every, you know, when you research it, everything is bad for you. Yeah. Well, the one thing I would tell anybody to cut out for sure is smoking. <laughs> And sugar. 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 Those are the two things I oh, say. I should sure. drink champagne. Yes. Well, no, I. I she actually, said sugar. I actually I'm just no. Champagne, she said smoking. Champagne, champagne is I alcohol. I don't smoke. We can let her, let her respond now. Champagne is alcohol, and there's nothing wrong in having a small glass. Well, mm, this is YK we're talking about. <laughs> it's not about moderation. How many parties do I go to? Ah, right. Okay. Yes. Yeah, a bottle is in excess. <laughs> don't walk. do anything in excess. Don't mm. drink in excess. Don't do, You know, but I actually. I always say a glass of red wine a day or half a glass of red wine a day. It's actually good for you. It's good for your brain and it's good for your heart. Oh, fantastic. I'm buying more red wine. Now, yes. let me ask you about sex. <laughs> no, <laughs> this one is not <laughs> the champagne you drink. So Drum. Drum. <laughs> I have a one okay. Before we talk about sex, one more thing to say about food and drink. Intermittent fasting. Intermittent yeah. fasting has been proven beyond oh, reasonable no doubt to um, prolong life. It's actually one of those things you can do if you want to add years. How can to we your fast life. intermittently? Please tell me. Um, so fasting intermittently, many ways, but this is the one I would advocate. It's called 16-8, where you have um, a break. So let's just give you an example. Um, you you don't. Eat, so when you wake up in the morning, mm. water, black coffee, no sugar, no milk, black tea, no sugar, no milk. And maybe your first meal, just delay your first meal till about 2 p.m. Ah, that means ah, I'm good to go. Uh, Sometimes I don't have <laughs> three, four. Okay, I've already done prepared meat this morning. 2 p.m. Let's finish this. 2 p.m. Two PM, two PM, mm. two PM and then show. you can eat in moderation between 2 p.m. Mm. and 10 p.m. That's eight hours. Yeah. Yeah. And then after 8, 10 p.m., nothing until the next day, 2 p.m. And you do that at least three times a week. Mm. If that's too much for you, two, or twice a week, even twice a week mm. has benefits. I, I do that benefits. at least five times. No, I'm not on the show. I do it at least five, four or five times. I don't eat till much later. I, my stomach has been trained now not to be able to eat early. Yes. Because I've been up, maybe I wake up about seven, seven, eight. Then I can't I eat till two, I three. I to touch on the other sex. And then in when Nigeria. Do you stop hmm? When do you stop eating? When do I stop eating? Maybe about seven. Oh, okay, well, that's, that's a good right. fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then you now have about a 20 hour fast. Yeah, I, I don't, because I, I've learned not to eat late at night as right. well. Okay. You Let's know, talk about that's but the only pro problem about it is that, well, okay, so sorry, so. uh, Moriah, the only problem I have is that that food, when I eat it, uh, oh, no. it you have to eat, whatever you eat must be in moderation. You can't now just take a big bowl of uh, rice. You tea, know how we tea. love rice in this environment. And mm. now it's like, when I have fasted for 5,000 calories, no, no, no. <laughs> it's attacked the food method. <laughs> 
It still has to be in moderation. Ah, that's that's yeah, that's yeah, yeah, it has to be in moderation. <laughs> I've told you you need to come to the center. Let's sit okay. down. Don't come at this center. Mm -hmm. We're yes. not coming to your center. Don't come to my mother to yourself, please. Um, the reason why I want to talk about sex because mm -hmm. in Africa here, it's almost unheard of for our old people to be. You retire from sex. Once you are, once the children are, they, in fact, when you're ending towards the end of 47, you don't even do. You're even shocked that your parents are still having sex. I'm shocked that Waikis at 62 is still having sex. I'm like, I didn't tell her that I mean, 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 I it matters. Sex is very good physical activity. Uh, I love it. <laughs> Zip, see you later today. Yes. yes. <laughs> and we just do mission night. There's only physical in mission night. Who told well, you? Well, you can do that. breakfast show. Up. We're drinking oh, tea, Auntie. Uh, Missionary is, what is this? this? Catholic is a... Oh, and I was going to say, my friends are watching. Mm -hmm. My friends are actually watching. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I am And I'm sure they are still active. Your yes. parents are still active. Why care, Moriah? See, nobody wants to know if our parents I are active. Nobody wants to know about your parents. But they talk to their doctors. My parents are physically active. Good. Anyway. So, yeah, there's a possibility that they might be still active. My mom, after this show, I will tell you one story. And she's not acting. I don't know about that. It's, it's, a, it's a breakfast show, so I'm not allowed it's to. It's a breakfast show, YK, please. So we are drinking but, but, tea. But it's helping you, obviously, YK. So that's part yeah. of, on that's the list that you have mentioned, but, you're but, saying that yes. the intermittent fasting and... Uh, physical, physical active activity. in the bedroom helps. Sex, oh yes, it does help. And then you know all these things. Like I say, it's a mindset. Mm. Sex actually is a it's a, it's a mood booster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so having sex regularly is a mood booster. You know, it makes you feel. It makes people feel better. Women, women, of course, you want to have sex, you know, because it makes you feel loved and desired and, mm -hmm. you know, it enhances your positivity and, and the and glow of that, yeah. you know. So, yes, yeah. so that I would advocate 100%. Okay. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me put it on the list. I'm not going to prescribe <laughs> Just enter the number <laughs> six, you know. But don't want to carry over activity. Do walking. She said walking. Yes, I'm I'm put that because, you know, we take news stories where men die on the activity. Would have brought in a exactly. mistress and person. overdo it, and then you just add that's, that's, doctor, that's an important point. A young no, girl no, no, arrested because the sex I partner died. To, but but have you? We didn't ask those men what they've taken to. So a man, you know, there's a young tablets. person, oh, they want to prove and themselves. then he wants to prove that he's still a young G, yeah. and goes to a pharmacist and says, "Can I have something?" Yeah. You know, there are but, names for these things. Mm -hmm. Of you know, Viagra is the Oyinbone. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are some local yeah, products. They miss that, inside but too. Yes, the truth is that, the well, just, like, the doctor, just like you said, stop. nobody yes, wants to imagine that their parents are still doing it at the age of 60 or 70. 60? But 60 is young. 60 is young. She's an old woman. No. Ha. Wow. She's an old woman. Nah. No. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I don't even want to answer her. It's people on YouTube that will be abusing you. Yeah. So I will not even answer okay. you. Okay, okay. But for 70, should you, should you, should you, should you be abusing Oh, 70? Yes. Why, okay, you're lucky. They say by 70, you can still be active. I think you can be active. I know active. a 17-year-old that is still active. I want to ask him for his him advice. Or, no, no, him's always active. Ha! Him, uh, his wife is 60-something. You know something. any 70-year-old still active? And she's older than me. The wife is, she? is older than me. You know yes. any 70-year-old in Nigeria that is active? That's not true. Claire, did you call I her? Said, her? Well, I, I said, said there are 70-year-old women. 70 the man is 70, the wife is maybe 68 <laughs> or 67. When she's 70, I'm sure she'll stop. I can, I can almost be guaranteed. Okay, anyway, let's just change the subject. Okay, what, what, <laughs> well, thank what you very much. We have to wrap up. We have to wrap up. But let's take a few comments. Uh, yeah, so yes. what is asking that, you know, eating some things can help you prevent. What, what exactly are the foods that you recommend? Okay, all right. So we all know that you have to eat your vegetables, you know, vegetables. In, in the UK, we say spinach. Here, we say F4, you know, mm -hmm. all the different, anything leafy. Green. So, you know, anything green, eat. Mm. Green you know, um, foods, I, I'm talking about vegetables oh, now. About fish. Fish, oh. yes. Oily fish, 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 salmon. What of beef? Any, so beef is not anybody, so for most dogs, beef is not our favorite food in the world. Uh, you know, would rather have white meat than have red meat. Mm -hmm. Because red meat, you know, it has been linked to things like colon cancer. Mm -hmm. So if you can avoid or cut back red meat, or just have a little of it occasionally, then that it's ah. better. It's better for your gut. It's better for the. Salad, it's better so for it's your gut, you know. But it's, you know, you can have it spiced up. Mm. How? 
Spice it. Spice it. Yes. You can spice it. Yes. I made suya yesterday. You can you can get them to do because I I it's you know I've got it. My housekeeper is brilliant. I mean here she does those that that's her a four you know the thing. You, Very you know nice. how I do ugu. Very nice. Without you know I would just boil yeah. ugu. Mm. I don't yeah. use palm oil or anything. Just steam yeah. it. Add pepper, yeah. add some fish. I had that for dinner it's yesterday. Still lush, okay, delicious. you know what? Let me tell you, let me tell you that is it. That's fugu with the chicken and the onions and everything. Wrap it up in your the shawarma, the yeast wrap, the shawarma wrap. Mm -hmm. Put it and then put some maybe slight ketchup in it just to give some sauce or some hot sauce. Mm -hmm. Put some hot sauce in it. Now fold it up and put it in your toaster. Yeah. It's heaven. A bit heavenly. of pepper. You know, so put <laughs> a bit of pepper. <laughs> it's yeah. it's heaven with pepper, mm -hmm. fish, I love fish food. chicken. You know, okay, I have, have to wrap I have some tubes, please. Please hurry up. Uh, Jennifer Kanye says, oh my God, Moriah, 60 is the new 40. <laughs> Moriah, don't they, then Temida says, Moriah, don't they shy. <laughs> well, I mean, Moriah, you sure can't guarantee was. anything. It is when your body says to stop that you stop. Remember, you will get old too old. Amen. Stop stressing white My prayer is, why you know, <laughs> my prayer is that all of us will live very long. Amen. And at 70, Amen. we'll all be active. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. But, there is a question active. for you here. Yeah, <laughs> let me, I have to wrap up, but let me just re oh, uh, reiterate gosh. what you said. Um, so that you lifestyle. don't, the lifestyle changes, mm -hmm. exercise daily, very, very important. Mm -hmm. Socialize. Those of you going to church activities and they're, and they're always criticizing mm -hmm. you, it's a good thing. Go to church, go to mosque, do community service, participate in politics. Those yalogers, they live very long because they are participating. They are always doing stuff. So participate. So please, pay attention to question, regular. Okay, let me listen. Let me finish. This question is important for the it's doctor. It's a question. We're wrapping up. We're rounding up. Number three, um, do regular checkups. Number four, eat everything in moderation. Cut your beef, cut smoking, sugar. Don't finish a whole bottle of champagne like some people. Just take a glass of champagne, it's fine. <laughs> Intermittent fasting is extremely important. And regular sex will do you good. Now, YK, if you Please, have... The uh, question, she, he says, oh. um, this um, fasting till 2 p.m., will you not make it susceptible to, susceptible to ulcer? Over, over ulcer. That's a conversation for another ah. day. Thank you very much, Doctor. It was a pleasure having you. <laughs> yes or that no? That is all answer we him. can take um, on the show. It's a medical answer. Have a great answer. day. Not really. Tomorrow. Yes. Bye for now.